Howdy peeps and uh, welcome back to the channel for another inbox review. Today we have the Hobby Boss WZ-10 Thunderbolt uh, Chinese attack helicopter. I think it was their first ever attack helicopter in 172 flavour. Um, it says on the top linked. Uh, I'm guessing that's supposed to be length but yeah, Chinglish. So 22 and a bit centimetres long, 18 wide. Uh, which is uh, what? Um, I mean, yeah, several inches. I can't quite remember the the uh, <coughs> measurements in Imperial at the moment. It's a bit early in the morning, really, for me. So, usual pretty artwork. As one of the schemes, it's standard army scheme bit of bump about it if you want to pause and have a read it's a 2016 kit kit number is 87260 and on this side we have the other scheme which is the aerobatic team picture of the decals and the etch parts now I did actually film this yesterday um, and did something rather silly and instead of hit playback on the camera I hit delete so this is the sec uh, second go through and that means all the bags are already open yay so no faffing about with that what we shall do however it does mean all the sprues are in the box back to front and upside down and all over the place so we shall Lose the uh, advertising hoarding back to the clean, shiny cutting mat rather than the manky, dirty, nasty one, and pop a sprue in the shop. This is the main sprue, it's the only large sprue I would say in the kit. And we have our fuselage halves, wheels, winglets, rear stabilizers, cockpit tub, landing gear, seats most of the heli really oh excuse me while I might jog the camera while I move this light out of the way because I keep bashing my head on it there we go that's got it so I'll uh, zoom you in for a little close up looky around on this sprue so it zooms straight in the middle is it 172 so the wheels aren't anything spectacular but they are round uh, no weight on but mm, not really too much of an issue in this scale. The actual fuselage halves are uh, much akin to the ME262 I reviewed last week. We've got similar levels of fine detail. It doesn't appear to soften off much, to, if any, around the curves. Uh, nice panel lines and rivets, little vents. Um, I mean, it's it's a nice mould because <clears throat> I mean this shape can't be an easy shape to mould in styrene. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was slide moulded. Oh, it must be, I guess, because of the shape of it. But anyway, what else have we got to look at? Let's say there's the other cockpit half. We can see carries the same levels of detail and. I flick it, flip it a bit to get it out of the light so we can actually see more of that rather funky shape. So we have, <coughs> excuse me, the little winglets and stabilizers got the same types of detail. All manner of little greebly parts all over the sprue. Little screech. Ugh. Uh, here we have what is the uh, rear section of the top of the fuselage, I would guess you'd call it. We have a couple of bulkheads, control sticks, seats. Again, nothing spectacular to write home about there. And a sensibly detailed cockpit tub for what is, uh, let's be honest, 172 and modern, so not necessarily filled with switch gear and dials and all sorts but uh, there's enough there to 
at least make it look a bit you know it's not completely smooth and bland if we look on the inside try and angle it so we in the right place the eject pin marks are all out of the way um, these two here are a bit bit close but I think the uh, actual cockpit tub will cover those and the rest of them won't be visible the same goes for the rest of it no real eject pin marks in the way anywhere else um, I will zoom you back out again I remember which way is that out? No, that's in, that's out. So, yeah, solid looking sprue. There's uh, some slight seam lines on the landing gear and the circular parts, but nothing to be scared of. Next up, we have one of two identical sprues which are the weapon sprues as you can see two the same well if I put them the same way around you'd see they're the same sprue both sprue D so we'll only need to look at one of them I'll pop it around that way and zoom us back in nice and close for this because it's a fairly small sprue we can see we got so in the top left corner we've got the pylons, hangers, what I guess is part of a rocket pod. All pylons and hangers, missiles, and not the greatest detail on the missiles. They're a bit soft, so there's not I'd say there's not a huge amount of detail on them at all anywhere, but 172, so yeah. not an expensive kit either. Um, and so I'll just pass you around the rest of the sprues. You, could, you know, sorry, I'm going to need a drink in a moment. Um, we do have two different kinds of uh, rocket pods, rocket launchers, tubes. Got the usual circular one there, and we have the square one down here. Now, if we look at the back, the actual front part of the square one. Is very nicely done. Uh, it does look as though we've got four separate missiles or rockets sticking out of it rather than it all being moulded as one piece. There's a good deep relief on that as well so that will look so this thing does carry quite a lot of armament. I think it's either eight of each kind of missile or two of each kind of rocket pod or a mixture of the two. And we have our final main sprue, put it right way up, might help, which contains the rotor blades, rotor assembly, another set of landing gear, and a couple of other little bits. And so the main rotor hub looks quite nicely detailed. How much of it is visible, I don't know. Some of the rear rotor blades, nice, cleanly molded, no flash. Uh, a couple of other pieces which I'm not entirely sure what they are. And then we get the main blades, of uh, which we have five. Yep. Um, again, nicely moulded. What I will show you, because it probably doesn't show from that angle, if I turn the sprue that way, you can see they are moulded in such a way, oh, maybe that way might show it a little better. We can see where the sprue gates are, that the ones at the front are level. And as we go back, the sprue bends down. So all the blades are pre-moulded with, with a uh, droop, a downward curve in them. Which will help and should look good on the finished model. No ejector pin marks on the back of the blades or anything silly like that. It all looks so flash free and nice. Some nice shiny plastic. Finally, we, for the plastic at least, we come to the canopy 
which as usual with Trumpeter Hobby Boss comes wrapped in the or comes in bagged individually and wrapped in the soft foamy stuff for extra protection. Now not the greatest of glass has to be said but I mean it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. Certainly on the main canopy the you know, flat parts are nice and clear and don't distort but the side windows are rather lensy and a bit that one's a little bit cloudy in places but that might just be fingerprints from me. And the same goes for the other side windows because they are slightly bowed as well so they just work like a convex lens really. But nicely frosted off in the areas that are going to be painted so we don't have any issues with where to mask and where not to mask. Oh excuse me, slightly windy today in addition to having a ugh, weird throat. It, it's a 172 heli, you know, generally 172 kits, the glass isn't too clear. Um, I think it's mainly down to just the sheer fact that if you mould styrene, or clear styrene specifically, being more brittle, if you mould that thin enough that you can get really good uh, clarity and everything, it just becomes so fragile that it would just explode. Mm. Uh, quick swig, there we go. Next we're on to the decals, again in their own bag, protected by wax paper. Everything from the dotted line down is just uh, ordnance decals, so probably most of them won't get used. You can't read what they say, but nah, it's just blocks and dots. As for the rest of the markings of the different versions, they're nice enough. I mean, there's not a huge amount of carrier film around them. They're clean, crisp, in register. And we have little decals for the uh, screens inside the cockpit. And I'm just let's say glad there's not hundreds and hundreds of decals on it. Um, you do run the risk of special. I say in in a 172 scale, if you've got hundreds and hundreds of decals on it, you run the risk of it just looking a bit strange, uh, just because of the sheer amount of decals there are. Especially if you go with the full stencils and everything, it looks better in. 48 and 32 and finally we have parts wise at least we have the small sheet of etch engine grills I guess that's part for the rotor assembly seat belts mirrors sensory bits and windscreen wipers now the windscreen wipers in particular do look rather fiddly and delicate and could be a pig to glue on especially as they gluing on a clear plastic um, but I think I'd rather have them like that where you can you can leave them off let's be honest if you want to um, rather than having them moulded into the actual clear part itself which tends to lead to issues uh, trying to mask or then paint them after the fact and things can get messy when you really don't want them to. So. Oh, 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 oh. Dig, dig the paperwork out. So we have, and it's time to zoom you back out again before really we do this. That'll do. There we go. We have the colour, well, I say colour. It's a black helicopter. Uh, <laughs> six colours in 
white burnt iron flat black silver tire black and steel so black and metal with a bit of white somewhere I think call outs Mr Hobby Vallejo Model Master Tamiya Humbrol pretty much covers all of them and yeah as I say that's the army version and we have the aerobatic version which just has a few slightly different decals on it and at the bottom here we have the call outs for the weapons and um, yeah that's where the white comes in so not the most technical of colour schemes to do I would probably just prime it good coat of UMP black primer might even go with the gloss black and then save the gloss coat for the decals uh -huh. anyway instructions um, other than the change from there up of the picture the front page is identical to the uh, ME262 and pretty much anything else they make as usual first page is a sprue map not particularly much in this one obviously and then we're on with the cockpit going together with the PE seat belts screens it doesn't look a bad little office really for 172 Rotor hub going together, chin gun going together. That isn't slide moulded, so whether you want to drill it out is up to you. Then rotor hip or rotor hub, cockpit and chin gun going in between the fuselage halves. Uh, tail fins, top cover, the edge. Um, boom, boom, boom grills going on, canopy going on, although I, as I said I would leave the, um, I'm not doing very well on remembering things this morning am I, the windscreen wipers I would leave off until after I painted it and then probably attach them with a bit of clear varnish to be honest. Landing gear, undercarriage going together really simply and a few sensory bits aerials or antennae and the weapons fits going together I'll probably just go with both the rocket pods to be honest easier to build and paint and less faffing about with decals on them as well and the wings going on with whichever loadout you choose uh, no sense of various other little parts going on that's where that edge star shaped bit goes on the nose more little fiddly parts going on and the last of the fiddly parts going on and attaching to these B7s down here it's saying to stretch a piece of sprue to make the antenna um, Antenna manufacturing method, heat sprue shown, remove from plane and stress allow to cool and cut to required length. Hmm. Yeah, um, I might try, a, if I'm going to do that, I might try a bit of wire rather than stretching sprue to try and do that. Oh, there's my belly. And the rotor blades going on, finally. So, not a tricky build, nothing too uh, strenuous looking there. Um, should be a fun little one. With a, the trick will be trying to make a matte black airframe air look interesting. Um, but I'm sure we can figure something out. There's plenty of decals on it to brighten it up and a nice grey panel line wash should pick out the detail nicely and it'll uh, look quite pretty anyway thanks for watching um, if you like what you see oh dear excuse me again if you like what you see or hear probably not here today but you know uh, give us a like feel free to subscribe to the channel and never say no Comment in the comment section, 
down there some well down there um, if there's anything you want to see anything you think I could do differently better worse um, <laughs> but yeah enjoy your modeling have a nice day peace out rock on bye bye